Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to make ghost slime or ectoplasm looking text effects in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions that I want to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. And let's rename this as ghost slime text. Okay, because we're making ghost slime or ectoplasm uh, text effects today. So the width that we're using is going to be 3,840 pixels by a height of 2,160 pixels, 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, background contents doesn't matter, we're going to change that. Our uh, color profile is going to be Adobe RGB 1998 uh, square pixels, hit create, and we are now ready to begin. The first thing that we want to do is change our foreground and background colors to the colors for our background. Now you can use this text effect on any text on any background. I'm just going to create a background to make it uh, to give us something to put the text on. So let's go with a deep uh, green gradient background, which is what we're going to do. So let's hit, uh, let's go to our foreground color like you just saw me do, and let's pick this color 0725. Zero, zero. A very, very, very dark green. Hit OK. And then let's click on our background color here. And let's change that to 020A02. OK. And that is now a super dark green, almost black. And that is going to be the gradient for our background. So let's now go to the gradient tool on our toolbar. Now you can get there by hitting G on the keyboard like that, or you can go over here to the gradient tool and click on that. Um, now make sure that you are on the foreground to background gradient, which is the very first one here. You want to be in the radial gradient. So click on that. Mode is normal, opacity 100%. Reverse is unchecked. Dither and transparency are both checked. Then go somewhere near the center of your uh, uh, image, click, hold down shift and just drag out to the either the right or the left uh, and then let go and you have this very dark gradient which is perfect because we want our text to be the star here not the background so uh, this looks pretty good so once you have that the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to pick our uh, font okay so what we need to do is write in our text so we're going to go to our text tool so hit T on the keyboard or you can click on the text tool right there and uh, then you can bring up your character palette now if you don't see character palette over here you can go up here to window and just go down here to character click on cl character and there it will pop up now the font that I'm using is called double feature I've got a link in the description below where you can download this font for free on the web uh, and uh, once you have that install it and you're ready to go with that or you can use any font that you'd like I have found that the drippy looking fonts, the fonts that have pre-built drips in them, seem to work best for this effect. Of course, you can always make your own drips, but that is a subject for another tutorial. So I'm using double feature. I'm going to use it at 240 uh, points, um, and nothing else really matters. You could make it uh, over here. You could click on this, which makes all of the, uh, all the uh, letters capitalized, or all caps as it says. But uh, since the double feature font is an all cap font, it's not really necessary here. So then what you want to do is go uh, somewhere in the center of your document and then you want to just type in your text. And as always, I am using pixel magic. Now you can barely see this because I'm using the foreground color and it doesn't matter what color you use because we're going to be changing it. However, uh, because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing next, I'm going to change this to white, but you don't need to, okay? Um, just be aware that any color you want to use, you can use because we're going to be changing the color using a layer effect of a color overlay later. So the only reason I'm changing this to white is so that you can see that I'm going to change the kerning between some of the letters. Like here the A is a little far away from the G. So the way that you do the kerning change is you put your text tool in between the letters that you want. You click so that you get your um, you get your cursor in between the letters and then holding down alt and using the left and right arrow keys you can then move the text closer and further apart. So left arrow brings it closer, right arrow brings it further apart. 
So what we want is for it to just look good to our eye and everything else seems to work pretty well. Just the A was slightly too far apart. Uh, that's too far, that's good. Uh, so this looks better, well, yeah. This looks fine to me, so then you hit the check mark and we now have our text. So then we're going to go back to our move tool by hitting V on the keyboard, and then we're going to move this back towards the center like so. There. We are now in the center of our document. So again, the color here doesn't matter. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply a lot of layer effects to this text. Okay, so stay with me. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly, but you can always pause the video where you need to copy down information. Okay, so let's get started by going over here on our layers palette, go down to layer styles, and we're going to start with a bevel and emboss. I'll move this out of the way so that we can see it a little bit better. And here we go. Uh, the style that we want is inner bevel. It's going to be a technique of smooth depth of 120%. Direction is up. Size is going to be 98 pixels. Uh, soften is going to be zero. Shading is going to be 135 degrees. And make sure that you have use global light on check. That's true for almost every effect that I do. I rarely use it. I've rarely found it to be useful. Uh, so always uncheck use global light. Uh, 135 degrees is the angle. The altitude is going to be 60 degrees. That means the light is almost directly above our image. Uh, gloss contour is going to be this guy right here, which is called the ring triple. Now, uh, to find the ring triple, if you don't see it, when you click over here is click on the little arrow, then click over here on the sprocket and go down here to contours. Once you go to contours, it will, it will say a very tongue tie-ish kind of thing to say, which is replace current contours with the contours from contours. Hit OK and you will then see all of these contours. And triple ring is this guy right here, uh, ring triple right there. So that's the one that you're looking for. Anti-alias is checked. Highlight mode is going to be linear dodge add. And the color that we're using here is C0FF00. Okay, and uh, opacity is going to be 100%. Shadow mode is going to be linear burn. It's going to be all black, which is all zeros. Uh, and the opacity is going to be 25%. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn on contour here underneath bevel and emboss. And then we're going to go there. And the contour that we're looking for here is going to be cone inverted. And you can find that right next to cone uh, lopsided. I forget what this is called. Asymmetrical. So cone inverted right there. That's what we're looking for. And anti-alias is checked. Range is going to be 100%. The next thing that we need is going to be a stroke. So let's click on stroke and let's bring up stroke. And uh, the size that we're looking for here is going to be six. Position is going to be inside. Blend mode is going to be normal. Uh, opacity is 100%. Overprint is checked. Fill type is going to be color and the color that we're using is black, which is all zeros. Hit OK and we are then done. Next, what we need is two inner shadows. So you're going to click on inner shadow and when we're done with inner shadow, you're going to click on the little plus icon. So the top inner shadow that we're going to want, the one that's uh, closest to the top of the window here, is going to be a blend mode of vivid light. The color that we're using here is going to be C. 7 FF91. The opacity is going to be 50% and the angle is going to be 134 degrees. Use global light, of course, is unchecked. Distance is going to be 20. Choke is going to be 3. Size is 18. Uh, the contour that we're using here is going to be uh, this guy right here, which is cone. Okay. Anti alias is checked and uh, the noise is going to be zero. The next inner shadow, which is the second inner shadow from the top, we're going to use a blend mode of multiply. The color is going to be black, which is all zeros. Uh, opacity is going to be 50% and the angle is negative 45. That's pointing down into the right, negative 45. Use global light again is unchecked. Make sure that that is unchecked. Distance is going to be 26. Choke is one. Size is 16. Contour is going to be linear, which is the very first one and the default. Uh, contour. So anti-alias is going to be checked. Noise is going to be 2. 2% 2 is what we're looking for there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an inner glow. So we're going to put on an inner glow. Uh, the blend mode is going to be multiply. Uh, we're going to do it at 100%. Noise is going to be 7. The color that we're using over here is 2B8806. Okay. 
Uh, the technique that we're using is softer source is going to be the edge, not the center, but the edge. Choke is going to be zero. Size is going to be 32 pixels. Contour is going to be this guy right here, which is going to be cove shallow. Anti-alias is unchecked. Range is going to be 60. Jitter is zero. Once you have that, then the next thing that we're going to want to do is a color overlay, and that will change the color of our text. So the blend mode that we're looking for is normal. The color that we're looking for here is going to be 53, 142, 53. Uh, well, that's the RGB, which is what I use to play around with, but you can also use 358E35. Okay, uh, that's what I'm normally calling out. Um, let's see here. Opacity is 100%. Next up, we are going to do uh, an outer glow. Okay, so the outer glow is gonna be a blend mode of hard light, opacity is gonna be 31%, noise is going to be zero, and the color that we're using is C0 uh, FF75. Okay, and then technique is gonna be softer, spread is zero, size is 18, uh, contour is gonna be ring double, which is this guy right here. Right, ring double. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked, range is 50%, jitter is gonna be 10%. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to need two drop shadows. Okay, so the topmost drop shadow here, and remember you can create two by just clicking on the little plus icon here. The top drop shadow is gonna be a blend mode of multiply. The color is gonna be all black, which is all zeros. Opacity is gonna be 100%. Angle, remember, uncheck use global light, is gonna be 135. Distance is 26, spread is seven, size is 46. The contour is gonna be the standard linear. Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is gonna be 2% and layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. Second drop shadow is gonna be a blend mode of multiply. Color is again all zeros, which is black. Uh, opacity is gonna be 44%. Angle again, uncheck use global light is gonna be 135 degrees. Distance is gonna be 28. Spread is going to be zero. And size is gonna be 46. This uh, contour here is called Sawtooth. You can find it right here, uh, Sawtooth 1. And anti-alias is unchecked, noise is zero, and layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. Now that gives us this very nice look, but we are not done. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to turn this uh, text layer into a smart object. Now the reason that we're doing that is so that we can add on some more layer styles on top of the layer styles that we already have here. And also it leaves the text as editable, meaning that if you open up the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, I just lost what I was doing. Oh, uh, if you open up the smart object by double clicking on the layers palette on the smart object, it will open up the underlaying file, which in this case will be the text file. Uh, and then you can edit the text and it will save everything. And once you save that edit, all of the effects remain in place and you don't have to redo them. Okay, so that's why we're turning this into a smart object. The main reason here though is so that we can add on more layer styles to give it a glow that is still going to follow the text should you change the text at a later date. So right click on the layer uh, and we're going to convert to a smart object. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna go down to our layer styles and we're gonna add on two final layer styles to complete the effect. The first layer style is going to be an inner glow. So let's go to inner glow here. And the inner glow that we're looking for is going to be linear dodge add. So we're going to go to linear dodge add. Opacity here is going to be at 60%. So let's change that to 60. Noise level is going to be at 4. So let's change that to 4. And the color that we're looking for here is going to be as follows. 0, 0. FF00, so a nice bright green. Next, we're gonna have our technique is gonna be softer. It's gonna be coming from the edge. Our choke is going to be zero and our size is gonna be 32%. We are then going to use cone asymmetrical for our contour, which is this guy right next to cone. So right here, cone asymmetrical, click on that. Anti-alias is gonna be unchecked. Our range will be 60 and our jitter will be zero. 
Okay, and that gives us this look right here. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is going to be an outer glow. So we're going to click on the outer glow right here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to change this to linear dodge add right here. Opacity is going to be 70%. We want that to be pretty visible. Okay, the noise is going to be at zero. The color that we're using is going to be the same color as before, which is 00FF00, so a nice bright green. Um, the technique that we're going to use is softer, spread is going to be zero, and the size that we're going to use is going to be 49. Uh, the contour that we're looking for is going to be terraced. Now, terraced is kind of a freaky one. Uh, I can never remember which one of these it is. I think it's this guy right here. Uh, terraced, yes. So see, it's kind of this jagged line going uh, from left bottom to upper right. That's the one that we want it to be. Okay, anti-alias is going to be unchecked. The range that we want here is going to be 70%. Jitter here will be at 0%. Okay, you can add in a little jitter, which gives it a little bit of sparkle to it, but I happen to like it without that jitter, so I'm going to leave that at zero. Then we're going to hit OK, and our text effect is done. We now have an ectoplasmic or, or kind of ghost slime text effect in Photoshop where the text itself is still editable. And uh, as I told you, all you have to do is double click on the uh, text layer itself like so, and it will open up the text in another file, and if you go to your text tool, you can then select and change the text. Once you are done, you can close that and save it. Uh, oh, sorry. First, we have to hit the check mark there. Then we can click it and save it. Uh, whoops, click it and save it. Uh, yes. And once you are done, the change will stay in effect and all of your effects will remain in place. And there you have it our ectoplasm or ghost slime text effect is finished. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.